folk music this is a wonderful 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 passage it's a really really tough passage find a really tough if you want a benchmark of a of one of the toughest passages around this one will rank there right let's read this uh, ever so slowly and then go through this free of the taint of manufacture that phrase in particular is heavily loaded with the ideology of what the victorian socialist william morris called the anti scrape or an anti capitalist conservationism not conservatism oh my god stuff that solaced itself with the vision of a pre industrial golden age and so brilliant first sentence very tricky and so is a socialist is talking about anti capitalist conservationism not conservatism conservatism is uh, uh, hanging on to tradition being traditional conservationist is someone who doesn't buy, go around buying a lot of stuff who conserves things so if you are if you someone who says i'll buy two shirts and two pants two trousers every year and that's it then you can be a, you can be called a conservationist minimalist anti capitalist we understand so he's a socialist so he is an anti capitalist free of the taint of manufacture that is don't don't mass produce things and consume when that solaced itself with the vision of a pre industrial golden age solaced itself is consoled itself with the vision of a pre industrial golden age is very similar to the kind of stuff that we uh, we, we see in india okay but we say uh, years ago we did not have so much stuff but we were happier before capitalism crept in and destroyed our fabric something like that and so this passage is tough because this the first sentence has nothing to do with the with the rest of the passage and so it just sets the stage sets the tone let's read on in britain folk may often appear a cozy a uh, cozy fossilized form but when you look more closely the idea of folk who has the right to sing it dance it invoke it collect it belong to it or appropriate it for political or cultural ends has always been contested territory when i was reading this when i read folk here and folk here i did not understand that the reference was to folk music is referring to folk in this uh, friendly comfortable way uh the references to folk music you get that by saying who has the right to sing it and dance it he basically says folk is common territory anyone can pick it up and appropriate it for political or cultural ends who, who has the right who has who can claim it has always been contested territory and so the, never in history has it been clearly said that okay these three people run folk these four uh, set the tone on this this guy is the is, is, has written the bible on folk music none of that it's always been contested territory in our own time though the word folk has achieved the rare distinction of occupying fashionable and unfashionable status simultaneously this happens frequently right so uh, we talk about the 90s kids it's fashionable and unfashionable at the same time you talk about uh, uh, the glorious era of one day international where we grew up it's fashionable and unfashionable fashionable because it harks back to a wonderful nostalgic time and fashionable because it makes you look old and so folk also has a distinction of being fashionable and unfashionable so unfashionable because you're harking back to sometimes uh, fashionable because oh it was it really set the tone then just as the effusive floral prints of radical william morris now cover genteel sofas so the revolutionary intentions of many folk historians and revivalists have led to music that is commonly regarded as parochial and conservative wonderful this is a very interesting statement it's an effusive floral prints of radical william morris so this this these prints were were probably anti establishment they were, they were making a point striking a note for not being mainstream different distinct off beat all of that but they now cover genteel sofas they are all over the place just like that the revolutionary intentions of many folk historians and revivalists what they thought was 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 uh, off beat distinctive breaking the mold going off on off the beat and track all of that is now parochial and conservative the, what they thought was out there different distinctive now we look at it and say okay okay that's also standard template only types right and yet as newspaper columns periodically rejoice focus hip again influencing artists clothing and furniture designers celebrated at music festivals award ceremonies and on tv reissued on countless record labels we some of us might have come back and said it is parochial and conservative but if something has that means it has had its time it had a run and that's it but not that the case focus hip again 
is a, is a, is a chorus that we keep hearing very frequently. So it is, it was considered revolutionary by the people who created it. It's accused of becoming somewhat conservative and mainstream, but it keeps having revivals. It has, has many lives. It takes many shapes, many forms. It is hip again. So it, 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 it is a marker for its time. And it's generated and has and, and has retained an ability to be regenerated and, and looked back in different colors, different forms. And so I get the feeling that this passage is a, a, a kind of a tribute to folk music. And so the author really uh, has done his research. Uh, he's, he's thought about what, how folk has come to be claimed by different people or not really claimed by different people. How it has seen its... Uh, uh, a share of revolutionaries who came to be looked at as mainstream, how it has gone through ups and downs, how it is fashionable and unfashionable. So he is really winding himself up for saying, oh, it's so great, it's, it's seen so many avatars. Folk is a sonic shabby chick containing elements of the uncanny and eerie, as well as an antique veneer, a whiff of Britain's heathen dark ages. And so uncanny and eerie, so some mystery around it. Antique veneer, so something old. Veneer is a covering around it. A whiff of Britain's head and dark ages. A whiff of Britain's dark ages. A whiff of a long time ago. It traces its, its, its history to uh, historic elements. It is properly old and also holds on to something from, from an era gone by. That's why it's shabby chick. And shabby chick, like uh, what can be called shabby chick? Uh, wearing fantastically old fashioned clothes. Going away and wearing a, one of those uh, old looking kurtas and Hawaii slippers right? and with jeans pant. That is shabby chic. Right? The very obscurity and anonymity of folk music's origins open up space for rampant imaginative fancies. The origins are not clear, therefore we take we have a free ride over it. Think, think Ayurveda, homeopathy, you get this. The origins are not there, so I can keep adding layers to it. So nobody worries about where the exact origins were, but it is, you can add whatever you want to add to it. Cecil Sharp, who wrote about this subject, believed that folk songs existed in constant transformation, a living example of an art form in a perpetual state of renewal. One man sings a song and then others sing it after him, changing what they do not like. And in this thing, it is very non-traditional. It is not, it is not bound by a set of norms and rules. It is not uh, married to one way of singing or or, or, or or capturing. One guy sings, it's not saying that the other guy copies it, it's not saying the third guy mimics it. Says one guy sings, next guy is free to add his own flavor, third guy adds his own flavor. By the sixth iteration, we might not have much in similar with the first guy who started it, but hey, it has its own form. He compared each rendition of a ballet to an acorn falling from an oak tree. Every subsequent iteration serves the song anew. So you, you, this could be the starting point for the seventh guy. This could be the starting point for the fifth guy. And then they add their own layers to it. But there is tension and newness. In the late 1960s, purists were suspicious of folk songs recast in rock idioms. So in an iteration, if it takes a dramatically new form, the purists don't like it. So Oh, it's like ODIs gave birth to 2020s. And then now you have the 100. And quite a few guys who like this are very suspicious of this. What the hell is the 100? It's a weird idea. Why would we have it? 2020 is, is a 120 ball delivery game. What is a big deal? Why are you, why are you spoiling a good thing? So the, 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 the newness makes the purest suspicious of it. Electrification, however, comes in many forms. For the early 20th century composers such as Vaughan Williams and Holst, there were thunderbolts of inspiration from Oriental mysticism, angular modernism and the body blow of the First World War, as well as input from rediff the rediscovered folk tradition itself. Electrification comes in many forms and then the thunderbolts of inspiration. Electrification comes in many forms. What refers to here is, hey, the forms keep changing. There is one moment of inspiration or madness or crazy new thought process which took us from 2020 to 100. You cannot restrict it. This is folk. It's take, it has its own shape. So what motivated the people here, the early 20th century composers, were oriental mysticism, angular modernism and body blow of the first world war. I don't even know what angular modernism means. Fear not. We will, we will get back to it. Oriental mysticism. Oriental is east. Mysticism is mystery. 
input from the rediscovered folk tradition itself. Folk tradition was rediscovered in this era and they added their own layers based on random inspiration. And those inspirations are a sign of the times. The world war had, to, had a role to play. And that therefore, this is not something the purists can hold on to. Electrification can come from anywhere. Here, electrification use, is used as a proxy for inspiration. For the second wave of folk revivalists, such as even McCall and Al Lloyd, I don't know these names. Probably these names will get asked in the questions later, in which case we'll have to come back to this. Starting in the 40s, the vital, vital spark was communist dream of a post-revolutionary New Jerusalem. For the previous era, the early 20th century guys, for them, it was... Uh, it was World War and Oriental mysticism. For these guys, communist dream of a post-revolutionary New Jerusalem. For their younger successors in the 60s, who thronged the folk club set up by the old guard, the lyrical freedom of Dylan and unchained melodies of psychedelia created the conditions for folk rock's own golden age, a brief Indian summer that lasted from about 1969 to 1971. So the younger successors passed in lyrical freedom, unchained melodies of psychedelia, and had a glorious two-year run, which, which, according to the author, marks the high point of, of, of recent folk. Four decades on, even that progressive period has become just one more era ripe for fashionable emulation and pastiche. This comes back to the old point. And so, folk marks a high point. It reaches a point where everything appears revolutionary, different, distinctive, free, blazing its own trail, non-mainstream, non-conformist, and then give it time, it becomes what is referred to as, oh, it was so passe, it was very regular. Now we need to rediscover. This is new. And so that, that, even that glorious time, which is a high point of uh, being distinctive, has come to become one more era for, for saying, oh, it was all the same. The idea of a folk tradition being exclusively confined to oral transmission has become a much looser, less severely guarded concept. Of course it has. There's been focused in so many revivals. The oral tradition probably has gone or, or, or had gone away a long time ago. So the original folk tradition was oral transmission and improvisation. Now it is probably going to be reimagination based on some recordings. Recorded music and television for today's metropolitan generation are where the equivalent of folk memories are seeded. True. So you record and then you think about folk and then you add your own layer to it. And wonderful, wonderful passage very very tough if you're looking for an example of a of a crazy tough passage this is it i cannot remember too many far tougher passages than this one right here and so, so it's a tough one it's going to take time don't worry about it you, you, you'll you, you, if you hang in there and understand or understand 70 percent of it you, you, you're 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 going in the right direction and let's look at the questions the author says that folk may appear often appear a cozy fossilized form because of its nostalgic association with a pre-industrial past. It has been arrogated for political and cultural purposes. Folk is a sonic, shabby chick with an antique veneer. veneer. The notion of folk has led to several debates and disagreements. Cozy fossilized form. Cozy is comfortable. Fossilized is old. And so several debates and disagreements, this is out. It has been arrogated for various political and cultural purposes. It's out. It keeps, it keeps getting arrogated, then it is contested. Some cultural and political thing, it just becomes multifaceted, varied, but not cozy fossilized form. And so I want to look back at where cozy fossilized form comes. In Britain, folk may often appear a cozy fossilized form, but when you look more closely, the idea of folk, who has the right to sing it, or appropriate it for political or cultural, has always been contested territory. So, folk may often appear a cozy fossilized form. Let's look at the two choices remaining. It's a shabby chick with an antique veneer. It's shabby chick uh, and cozy fossilized form. Cozy fossilized form talks to roots from long ago and it appears like this, but it's, it, is, it is contested. So, uh, it appears like that because of the, the nostalgia association with the pre-industrial past. Yes, that is what it is. Uh, not this. The shabby chick with an antique veneer. It's its reimagination. It, it is old, but I'm reimagining it. To give you a, give you a parallel, if, if you're harking back to the the, the 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 glorious Indian era, where India formed 30% of the GDP, uh, and, 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 and and socially, culturally, economically, it was it was a powerhouse. 
uh, and then we we take some tradition from there and we look back at it then the nostalgia associated with it will be the cozy fossilized form you're talking about what this would be is to take some relic from there and then give it a a, a post modern clothing and then wear it as a, as a, as a as a cultural memory pot so you you remember that by giving it some clothing and wearing it or showing off with it right so that will be shabby chic so this is not this it is nostalgic association with a pre industrial past all of the following are causes for plurality and diversity within the british folk tradition except the fluidity of folk forms owing to their history of oral mode of transmission definitely yes this is a starting point of plurality and diversity one guy sings it second guy doesn't repeat it he renders his own version right paradoxically folk forms are both popular and unpopular right i don't i'm not sure about this it says fashionable and unfashionable so i don't think this is directly inferred but let's see the other choices the british folk forms can be traced to the remote past of the country plurality and diversity the starting point is so far away that there's no clear line from that one to today so there's no progression in, in, a, in a linear line so automatically it being so far so much into the past gives it so many variations and that gives the plurality and diversity so this probably is a yes as well british folk continues to have traced a pagan influence from the dark ages i'm not so sure let's see if dark ages is mentioned somewhere britain's heathen dark ages yeah containing elements of uncanny and eerie as well as an antique veneer yeah this is also being referred to in the passage continues to have traces of that influence from the dark ages that is true so even this contributes to the plurality and diversity just uh, some element from 500 years ago sitting in in folk forms remote past and dark ages both get referred to this is the one that is not referred to paradoxically folk forms are both popular and unpopular it is fashionable and unfashionable but not popular and unpopular and fashionable and unfashionable are different from popular and unpopular keep that in mind at a conference on folk forms the author of the passage is least likely to agree with which is the following views the power of folk recites in its contradictory ability to influence and be influenced by the present while remaining rooted in the past the author will jump in and agree with this when the author is basically saying folk takes its own shape it takes one original whoever is uh, who inspired by it or or taken to it uh, is moved by it and then creates his or her own version and then therefore moves it so there is a two way street between uh, the, the folk practitioner and the folk body of folk music so it's contradictory ability to influence and be influenced that is true our, our author would definitely agree with it folk forms despite their archaic origins remain intellectually relevant in in contemporary times that is true uh, i i I'm, i'm not sure about intellectually relevant i know where that is mentioned but the author clearly says it is relevant because it keeps reinventing it has a version of itself for every era so contemporary times there is going to be a version of that and so we'll we'll come back to this but this definitely he'll agree folk forms in their ability to constantly adapt to the changing world exhibit an unusual poise and homogeneity with each change ability to constantly adapt yes unusual poise yet homogeneity with each change this bothers me this bothers me this bothers me so much that i'll say that the author will straight away disagree with it there is one thing that the author consistently says when right? it's 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 that folk iterates and gets variety folk iterates and gets to i gets added to itself the vision or the layer added by the newest practitioner so if you listen to folk music and you sing it and it's a slightly different rendering that that adds to the body of folk music work so homogeneity is out you not one form orally transmitted and digitally transmitted from one generation to another retained in its purest form there is no such thing as purest form the author continuously says that each one adds a layer every layer counts for folk so homogeneity author won't agree so straight away i'm loving choice c the plurality and democratizing impulse of folk forms emanate from the improvisation that its practitioners bring to it yeah yeah definitely so oh, definitely this is exactly the opposite of of c of the of the idea of homogeneity 
plurality and democratizing impulse focus a body of work you go you get thrilled by it you add one more layer to it it is extra layer created which is different which is which is uh, varied heterogeneous that's exactly what the author is likely to completely agree with choice c is the right answer the primary purpose of the reference to william morris and his floral prints is to show william morris and floral prints i remember discussing this just as the effusive floral prints this part effusive floral prints are the radical william morris now covers gentile sofas so the revolutionary intentions of many folk historians and revivalists have led to music that is commonly regarded as parochial and conservative what was revolutionary once is taken as is slowly transforms into becoming regular and mainstream that's the exact reference of william morris revolutionary on one occasion a couple of decades later or some time later is so regular that it forms the mainstream the pervasive influence of folk on contemporary art culture and fashion no that what is once regarded as a radical in folk can later be seen as conformist that's it i don't even want to really see choices c and d this is exactly what it is what is radical today is seen as mainstream tomorrow that what was once derided as genteel is now considered revolutionary opposite opposite of this this is wrong that despite its archaic origins folk continues to remain a popular tradition this is true but this is not this analogy so choice b jumps out at us which of the following statements about folk revivalism of the 1940s and 60s 1940s there are so many names mentioned that i am confused here cannot be inferred from the passage so let's see the 1940s i think it's the last paragraph for the second wave of folk revivalists such as ivan and mccall starting in the 40s the vital spark was communist dream of a post revolutionary new jerusalem for their younger successors in the 60s Uh, the lyrical freedom of dylan and the unchained melodies of psychedelia and lyrical freedom unchained melodies a uh, communist dream these were the uh, anchor points or, or or the critical points for this 40s and 60s guys freedom and rebellion were popular themes yeah probably yes so it won't come under cannot be in friends electrification of music would not have happened without the influence of rock music not sure at all this is not mentioned anywhere when we even discuss this electrification in that context was talking about being inspired the inspiration in that passage so electrification of music rock is not not mentioned anywhere in the passage even though it led to folk rock's golden age it wasn't entirely free from critique yeah this is i think can be referred because even that progressive four decades on even that progressive period has come to has become just one more era ripe for fashionable emulation and passage which is that is non conformist in the extreme defining off beat but even that came to be described as regular even this is mentioned it reinforces cecil sharp's observation about folks constant transformation yeah one more layer getting added in the 40s defined something in the 60s guys took it, took over from what the 40s guys had defined and gave it more freedom and gave gave it the, the the golden era for for folk rock this can also be inferred these three are are not that bleeding obvious but this one is not mentioned anywhere in the passage electrification of music would not have happened without the influence of rock music nothing in the passage gives us that 